Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here on this cold winter season in December, getting ready for Christmas, which won't arrive until the 24th, that happens to be Christmas Eve, and then after that, the 25th of Christmas. And then next we know, we'll have New Year's Eve on the 31st, all the way until January 1st, the beginning of 2022, New Year's Day. So I want to get right to it by reviewing some Christmas movies and specials, starting with the most infamous, that's considered to be the worst Christmas special ever. It's a Brazil-produced animated Christmas special called simply The Christmas Tree. It's a story about this wicked mean-spirited uh, and very cruel uh, woman named Mrs. Mavilda who runs an orphanage to the little kids who does nothing but do her selfish acts by taking all the donation money from the town's mayor which she made a promise that she was going to be able to buy some new clothes and presents for the kids but it turns out that she's just gambling her life away by playing poker with her friends. Meanwhile, the kids are about to find a new hope and miracle by uh, adopting this tall pine tree as their new friend named Mrs. Hopewell. And we also get to meet uh, a new family called the Kindles which is joined by Judy, along with her husband, who is about to go out of town for a while, and their kids, uh, Lily and Pappy. Yeah. Now, I know the internet got this wrong. They all do. While this actually did became simply direct-to-video, that's released by Family Home Entertainment. It later got released on DVD in 2003 by Good Times. Yeah, Good Times Home Video, that is. Not the TV show. Um, yeah, it got released on September 11, 1991. Go figure. So this would have been 30 years ago. Hard to believe. Um, but this did air on USA Network, you know, the cable network that did play a lot of reruns of all of the shows that came on network television, but they also played game shows, they played the Cartoon Express of all the other Saturday morning and weekday morning cartoons, sometimes they even produced them too, and they even show uh, WWF wrestling, they show movies, they even show their original movies, and as well as um, USA Up All Night, you know, with Rhonda Shear and Gilbert Gottfried, the comedian, <laughs> among many others before the network had uh, changed its tone and, and all. Yeah, no thanks to uh, NBC Universal and all, and Comcast. Well, yeah, but it was an awesome network back then. But it sure was an awful holiday special that they choose. Because, as we cover this, it had putrid animation. Uh, the voice acting is as dull as dishwater. There's no uh, actual emotion, nor energy, but their facial expressions looking pretty odd, weird. They barely move at times, although sometimes they do move. They keep making these weird expressions that it just makes me feel very winks and cringe, even. Not to mention, the editing is completely jarring. <laughs> Unbelievable. And this is just the beginning. <laughs> because um, I know there's been some bad specials out there, but I never thought this could be the one that's so odd that it did air it on USA more than once. Uh, I should know because I did found uh, a re broadcast recording dating back to December 1993 
which at that point on, I was only eight years old at the time. I did have cable, so I might have had glanced at it uh, uh, when I was on Christmas vacation. I'm sure this wasn't on the day when I saw this, but I had a feeling it was probably afterwards when they repeated it. But I kind of remember it was being played with other uh, Christmas specials at the time, but they were also playing movies too. Uh, like, I remember watching the Chickmas Christmas on there, and I did remember watching some other different Christmas specials. So, I figured this was one of them. But I I remember how mean-spirited it was, and I only saw this once, never looked back again, until it suddenly it got rediscovered on the internet. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure everyone else already covered it already, including... Mr. Doug Walker himself, a.k.a. the Nostalgia Critic, yeah, which I lost respect for him years ago. And apparently he dubbed this as the room for for all Christmas specials. <laughs> Go figure. I know there's other uh, internet reviewers out there that cover that too, but now I'm going to take the challenge myself. So, for better or worse. So at least now we know that this special had gotten some repeats more than once, so it's not only on its original broadcast in 1991. So, there you go. But, here we go. It stars William Griffin, Ellie Dragas, Aya Kleiman, Karen Dragas, boy, what, what names, Paul Wright, Helen Quirk, Maya Melzer, Makey Becker, Michelle Becker, and Leanne Kleinman. It's written by Nils uh, Christensen, and it's directed by background artist Flamerian Ferreira. If you're familiar with that name, he actually had worked on several animated specials and movies to, to name of, like the Smurfs, for instance. And he also had work for Walt Disney Feature Animation that includes all the Disney afternoon shows that you're familiar with. So how on earth did he become so responsible for the for the dreadful special? Well, that's what we're gonna find out for ourselves. The special begins and it actually had a narrator that's more cheerful than the rest of the special. It's set around at a small town in the far north, I think right past the North Pole, you know, where Santa lives. Well, probably pay a visit later on. We have an orphanage that's being run by a nasty, cruel, and wicked woman named Mrs. Mavilda, who subjects the orphans by using strict rules and prevents them from having any toys and new clothes. So yes, she basically uh, takes all the donation money from the town's mayor, actually strips uh, all their clothes that they have. Yeah, I mean, we actually get to see a little girl's uh, panties and um, this young boy's uh, underwear, or possibly shorts. And they just send the new clothes uh, straight in, into the closet. Meanwhile, she just goes around having a gambling problem with her best friends uh, playing poker that night using the donation money which I guarantee you she's gonna win all by herself and be able to keep it uh, for herself without having to spend any money for new toys and presents for them. Meanwhile the orphans have coped with the situation by bonding with a tall pine tree as they named her Mrs. Hopewell, which means that they'll hope for a new miracle that will arrive from her, which happens to be their magical friend. And it proves when a new family, the Kindles, had moved to town, and the mayor had assigned the mother, Judy, to the position of Mavilda's assistant, joining in with her daughter, Lily, and her son, Happy, while her husband Ray just leaves town. 
hoping to find a new job at a lumber mill. Judy does her chores while Lily and Pappy are treated just the same as the orphans, you know, just trying to, you know, hang around, do exactly what Mrs. Mavilda has to say. So they're just, you know, running around in bed. Sometimes they go outside. I mean, even once uh, Judy is finally finished uh, cleaning, you know, washing the windows, waxing the floor, you know, washing the clothes, the dishes, everything, all these chores that she had to do, and now she'll be able to tell a story to all the children around about the Christmas tree, telling all these Christmas stories and everything. They also had a dog named Licorice. Yeah, it's a black dog, you know, like a Labrador, which unfortunately um, Mrs. Mavilda really hates and she wanted to get rid of him, but the dog was very smart. But luckily, the dog came by and hid it inside her room, hoping that Mrs. Mavilda doesn't find out. Yeah, it's a stray dog, by the way. So, of course, they've been decorating Mrs. Hope well. They added a slide and swing, and then sooner or later they'll be able to decorate. So, turning, well, at this rate, it becomes so magical that it will soon become a Christmas tree. Yeah, they're going to be able to add all the ornaments, uh, the Christmas lights, the tinsel, and all this other stuff together. When Christmas arrives, uh, the mayor had visited the orphanage to give a large amount of donated funds to Mrs. Mavilda, but once again, she continues to gamble her way to life until she lost the money. So therefore, she had a big hangover. Well, of course, she's been drinking and, and eating and all. That she decided to stay in bed and tell Judy about that. Just to, you know, make sure to not go out to go shopping for toys, gifts, and presents for all the orphanage and everyone around. So... Her evil plan was to trick Judy into thinking that she stole everything, all the money, and that she hired um, her friend Frank to get her caught, um, you know, stealing and be able to be sent to prison. And meanwhile, she had a plan to actually um, cut down the entire tree. So with the help of Pappy and then later Lily joins around with the dog Licorice to actually be able to find help finding Santa around uh, the North Pole. But until they went straight into the snow slope into the cliff where they spotted this giant bear and they're ready to be attacked. Luckily, Licorice had uh, saved their lives. She started, he started to attack the, the bear, but then Lily fell into the slope while Licorice uh, attacked the bear, and then the bear fell off of the cliff. So now, Pappy is all alone, trying to find Lily, you know, with uh, Licorice to get her on the sleigh. And, uh, she was nowhere to be found. She was completely lost. Uh, Judy was already um, already in the middle of traffic because there was a, a truck crash. There was an auto accident that happened that occurred. So Judy decided to uh, try to drive all the way straight into another shortcut so they can go directly back to the orphanage. And then Judy later had found out while she was doing her chores that that the kids are already outside. And then Judy finally arrived to save them because Mrs. Mavilda just hired Frank to bring in the chainsaw to uh, cut down this entire tree. And then the, the town mayor had arrived along with everyone else involved. 
So now they're about to protect this tree from being cut down. But of course, Mrs. Mavilda had left in a hurry. And finally she came back. She stole the chainsaw from Frank. And she was ready to um, chop it down until finally a miracle had happened. When Santa Claus had arrived. And yes, she got electrocuted. <laughs> Got struck by lightning. Thank goodness. So now uh, Santa had saved um, Lily. Also fixed her um, her teddy bear. Yeah, her teddy bear actually was missing an arm earlier. It happened a long time ago, but it finally got repaired. And now all the rest of the orphanage have all their new clothes. Yeah, with the magical powers of Santa Claus. And Santa Claus had already, uh, was arriving just on time during Christmas Eve. Sending out all the gifts to all the little children around, all around town. So now everything had became a wonderful Christmas. While Mrs. Mavilda, you know, finally getting her act straight. And now decided to work as an assistant to Judy, because now Judy, along with Ray and their kids, uh, Lily and Pappy, that they now have a family together, joining in with the nine, uh, joining in with all the orphan kids, so they have a perfect family. And there you go. Wow, such a terrible Christmas special ever made. Okay, aside from the putrid animation, the voice acting as dull as dishwater, the colors look incredibly pale, and the the facial expressions, their emotions, their eyes, their movements, their editing being so jarring and all. I think we cover that. I thought the story was completely mean-spirited. It tried to be as delightful and cherish, but it just turns into just another oddity. Mostly focusing on Mrs. Mavilda's uh, cruel uh, traits, you know, treating all the children around. You know, they had to be forced into cleaning all the messes. And, and doing all this other chores that they have to go for. The way they the way she was treating them poorly and horribly and the fact that she had to donate all the money that they were gonna give to the kids because they needed some new clothes and toys and presents. I mean, why did they hire this woman to begin with? I mean seriously. I wish they had fired her from the start. I mean the government could have been smart enough to actually hire someone who knows how to run an orphanage perfectly. Yes, I know we've seen this before with all these other uh, specials or movies where we always have to have a nasty uh, person to run an orphanage. They hated their jobs. All they care about is money. They care about love, you know, falling in love with someone. Yeah, kind of like the, the movie Andy, uh, which is not just the movie, but also the story and the musical and, and all. You know, we always have to have a woman who who cares more about about her life than everyone else's and the kids themselves. But boy, you know, she's just a mean-spirited bitch. I hated her so much that I wanted Judy to just really snap at her so much. Um, but thank goodness, I mean, she got electrocuted after being struck by lightning just when she was about to uh, use the chainsaw to chop out the tree. Um... I mean, you felt bad for the kids. You really do. Because the way they're being treated, that's not fair. And 
I don't know. I mean, th this didn't have enough energy. Everyone just seems completely dull. I mean, there's no feeling to it. I mean, I don't even understand why this professional, like, Fumerian Ferreira, can come up with something this terrible. That I couldn't believe it myself. And he could do better than this. But, I guess, you know, he needed the money to do so. This holiday special deserves a more significant rewrite and more concise storytelling. Much better colorful animation. Better voice acting that doesn't sound so dull and boring. Everyone has full of emotions. Everyone can move around and stop talking like like that. Or even, you know, looking straight um, in, on the wall or like acting like they're just watching paint dry or something like that. And have more spirit to the story. I mean, everything. Have, have more feeling. Try to make it as delightful and cherished as ever. Then we have a good meaning to this whole particular um, special as we know it. Then it'll have a nice, excellent meaning and a message to what Christmas is all about. Not this garbage. Not at all. Now, when I talked about the jarring editing that this had, I could tell you there's a scene where they did this clock uh, transition going from Mrs. Mavilda, you know, playing poker with her friends, which kind of leads to that because she's going to lose all that money, and then it goes directly back to Judy and the orphan kids still talking about uh, Mrs. Hopewell. And talking about all the Christmas stories, and then it goes back to forward, back to that again, back and forward, all over. Or even when they try to have one shot of Santa Claus, and it's only like a second, uh, just when he arrives. And I know they gave him a deeper voice. And all this other jarring uh, editing that they use, I mean, a lot of jump cuts that they put into it. Because it's obviously, you know. The script is just terrible. It's dreadful. It's incredibly as putrid as, as ever. It's very soulless. And it's not the perfect Christmas special to, to watch. Not even once. Unless you, you're curious about it. Well, I had to see it anyway. But it's been a long time. So... Avoid this special at all costs. I mean, unless you're curious about it, but I guarantee you, <laughs> you'd be better off just having a lump of coal than having to sit for this. And I can't believe I'm saying that. So that's the Christmas tree, and I give this special zero stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.